a Big Spark Studios original. Yeah, now that I have this like roadcaster DJ board, I'm like Give it to us, DJ. Hey guys, and welcome to Unhinged, you sexy sluts. If I, you think I'm a small robot, wait till I become a large robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Jake, your microphone. Too loud, too loud. So loud. It's like uncomfortably loud. <laughs> it's almost like talking into a megaphone. <laughs> Anyways, I see that we are recording. So, hey, everybody, what's up? And welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. Do you hear that? Is that the sound of change? That's right, motherfuckers. I have a legitimate sound. Uh, <laughs> what is this called? Soundboard. <laughs> Soundboard. Yeah, I have um, like a whole DJ set. I would lift it, but I know I'll break it. But I have a handheld microphone now. It sounds like an actual podcast and not like a shitty Skype call. Like, we are really moving on up here. Um, Now, if you want to never miss our growth, be sure to subscribe to... Wait. (laughs) Did you say never miss our growth? (laughs) Take two. (laughs) Hey, everybody. What's up? And welcome back to Unhinged. The whole point of that intro that derailed me is that, yes, I have a microphone and a roadcaster board. So now this is going to actually sound like our podcast used to sound. The visuals, you know, we're still on a shitty webcam, but we are going to figure this out. Like, oh, my God, the fact that anyways, I could. Like, this is the nerdy, high-production-level shit that I live for. Um, But now, before we get into the episode, I want to emphasize that y'all should subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like video episodes, I know that I literally didn't sell one ounce of the video portions, but we put those up on youtube.com slash chris every week as well. Um, I'm just so excited. I have, like, fucking hand mic. Like, ah, that was me pulling the mic away from my mouth. I know it's, oh God, the little things, guys. Um, Now, I feel like it is award season, award show season. So we, in, uh, in, (laughs) in good old award season fashion, I have been overserved. Yeah, no, I needed to get into the part, but it is award season. And I figured it would be kind of fun uh, to do all things award show related. I had you guys call in to 310-844-6459 to submit your all-time favorite like award show moments, the most iconic ones, things that people should know about. Um, and I think we have a fun little game lined up and everything. But um, before we get into any of this fun stuff, I want to shout out Inner City Arts, which is uh, widely regarded as one of the nation's most effective arts education providers it's an oasis of learning achievement and creativity in the heart of skid row and a vital partner in the work of transforming the lives of young people in los angeles and beyond and uh, one of the aspects i love about award shows is seeing the people who never imagined this to become their life i very much feel that sentiment and feel lucky to have made it to a point where I set up my own soundboard. Woo! Um, No, but for real, I think um, arts are always overlooked and underfunded. And to be able to help the future filmmakers, artists, etc., to give them any kind of assistance or resources that we can, I feel like is such an honor. So we're going to leave the link for innercityarts.org down below. Be sure to check it out and donate, whether it's money or time or anything. Um, I just thought it was a really great cause to put on such a fun, creative episode. So, um, And who knows, maybe some of these uh, folks who are going to get some help are going to be the next great filmmakers and they're going to win tons of awards. And we'll talk about them on our D minus podcast. I know the dream is still alive, y'all. Um, now I have always been. I've, I've talked. I talk about this a lot when I talk about like my come up and whatnot. That 
I'm from Delaware. There's not really like an entertainment industry. There's no fame. Like that's just never been a part of my upbringing. So I was always obsessed with award shows. And I just, I mean, I just, I fucking love them. I think, well, okay. I loved them until I got into all of this. And then I went to my first one, which was the VMAs in New York City in 20. 16 it was the one with rihanna had like her whole she got like the vanguard award i believe so she had like nine different performances and seeing an award show in person versus on tv are two different things like award shows are truly made for television also i would like to announce that i am wearing a an award show outfit and by that i mean i just literally threw a jean paul gautier XY project jacket over a t-shirt I was wearing. I know we're really breaking barriers here. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Joan Rivers. <laughs> now, oh, rest in peace. Um, now, yeah, I just I love award shows. They're so campy and they're so ridiculous and and sometimes violent. Okay, I mean, oh, oh my God, I'm gonna start off with a hot rant. This Chris Rock Will Smith slap. <laughs> can we all shut the fuck up about? Like, I, I just feel like, honestly, not to pull a race car, but if this were two white men, people would be laughing about this. Like, if Will Ferrell did this to Adam Sandler, I feel like everybody would be laughing. But because it was a black guy, it was like, oh, this is violent. And it's like, oh, God, I'm just also so fucking overhearing about it. Like, yes, it was like literal, uh, like physical violence. But like, <laughs> can we... Uh, I just, I don't know. I When things become so overhyped like that, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. It's honestly why I've never seen Euphoria. It's why I've never seen like Step Brothers or The Hangover. Like just everyone, <laughs> shut, Justin, I don't want that fucking face from you, okay? <laughs> I have a fucking good sounding microphone now. I'm different. <laughs> okay? <laughs> things are different. I've got some Pinot Grigio in my hand or something. I don't even know what the fuck. Wait, what, what was your reasoning for not watching like some of the most beloved movies of the past 10 years? Because everyone was like, you have to watch them. And I'm like, I don't have to do fucking anything. Oh, you just don't like to be told. <laughs> yes. Like, shut up. Okay, got it. Everyone was like, do you, what do you have to say about Chris Rock and Will Smith? And I was like, what I have to say is to shut up. <laughs> oh, God. What, what if we had both of them on unhinged? Uh, then I would be making a lot more money from this podcast than I currently <laughs> fucking am. <laughs> if Chris Rock and Will Smith came on this shit show. I think they should. So Will, Chris, come on over. No, no, no offense to those two men. I respect, well, I, I know both of you very well, just in terms of like, I've seen you on a magazine cover. I'd like other guests before those two. Like just, there's no shade. It's just, I would definitely love to interview two people more than them. Who's your like pie in the sky guest other than Hillary Duff. <laughs> I don't know why you had to drag me like that. Um, I would love um, just a willing participant at this point. Um, we do oh, guys. Wait, have we teased this on the podcast that we actually have a really exciting guest whose book I'm awaiting on my doorstep today. No, we didn't name drop them. I don't think we didn't name drop. But did we give like a genre? I think we gave a genre. You, you, uh, said, you said a genre. We have a, yeah. yeah, we have a housewife. We have a housewife. Yeah, whose book I'm expecting on my front steps literally today. I am. <gasps> That's a hint. It is a hint, and it's also a book that I have to read uh, in the next seventeen or eighteen days, which I've never read a chapter in that amount of time. So this could be interesting. <laughs> Audible. Oh, well, they're not sponsoring, so fuck you. Sorry, audiobook. <laughs> uh, remember when Audible used to like sponsor every YouTube video and every everything? All right, this has been a lot of rambling. <laughs> Let's just get into the episode. Now, um, we're going to do the structure of this episode a little bit differently and kind of go between voicemails and the game that we have in mind. So um, if you want to be in a voicemail or what? Guys, I'll <laughs> dial if you want to call in. I know this sounds like a shit show, but this is gonna set up perfectly for the rest of this episode. 
Um, if you want to join, if you want a voicemail to be in an episode, be sure to call 310-844-6459. I put the prompts on my Instagram stories, you know, whenever, whenever. So just, you'll want to, you'll want to follow along and <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get, I asked you guys to call in about your favorite award show moments or like iconic award show moments. So let's hear the first, let's hear the first one. Chris, what's up? Not much. Love your podcast. Thank you. Um, the best, most iconic talk show or talk show, award show moment is Miley. What's good? <gasps> Miley, what's good? When Nicki oh. Minaj called Miley Cyrus out, uh, that bitch had a lot to say about me the other in day. In the press, in the, the other day. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was iconic, and no. we even have a song to commemorate the moment. There's Honestly, a... like, I live for the drama, uh, but I am women supporting women. So, like, to- totally. Like, can we just support each other? Anyways, yeah. Miley was good. That was iconic. Oh, my God. No, that was truly iconic. Thank you so much for bringing up that moment. Uh, the year that Miley hosted the VMAs was, I swear to God, the beginning of a shift in the universe. Like with the foam finger, like all of that. I remember where I was watching that. She released Miley Cyrus and her dead pets afterwards, which honestly is a slept on album. Um, but yeah, Nicki Minaj being like, Miley, what's good? I heard Little Miss... Uh, whoever had a lot to say about me in the media the other day, Miley, what's good? But then I thought it was like this huge tension. And as like a Miley stan and a Nikki stan, I was very conflicted. But right as the camera cuts away from Nikki, it almost looks like she's cracking a smile, which is why I don't know if this is like MTV being like, we need some beef or if it was like actual beef. Like that's what that's what I hate about award shows. Like I said, they are made for television. <sighs> I guess I I mean, I guess we'll never know. But I would like, ugh, I love drama. But of course, women support women. I'm also supportive of women fighting women. I'm supportive of men fighting men. I'm supportive of just fighting, I think. Um, <laughs> it's really fun to witness. Maybe the Romans were onto something. <laughs> Anyways, that was one giant intrusive thought. To, uh, Did anything ever come of that beef? I don't think so. Which leads me to believe that it was probably kind of like a scripted type thing. Like, like kind of? Or they took it offline. You know, I, I used to, I used to, as a reporter, I used to cover award shows. And I remember you'd see all sorts of stuff. And, and at the end of the day, these are human beings. So they can get together offline and have conversation, right? Yeah, no tea, no shade, no lemonade. But I don't think Nicki Minaj would be one to keep things offline. <laughs> you know, like there's something about her that gives me the vibe of let's take this to Twitter, not like let's take this offline. So I also think that that's why I think it wasn't real is because, well, maybe she tweeted once. Anyways. No, but th- when I think about it now, it's... um. It does seem sort of scripted with, or not scripted, but I feel like maybe the MTV was trying to do a little like celebrity death match vibe <laughs> because Miley's response. Why is that not a like, show? It, it was. was a it show. used to be Why a show. It was a big show. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, that was like the, you don't remember like it's like claymation and it's like two celebrities fighting. Claim, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, no. So why isn't that a show like real? Not I don't. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the claymation. No, I want like live action. Yeah, but like celebrity her, boxing. her response, Miley's response back, it almost did seem like it could be like a pro wrestling thing. She's like, yeah, we're congratulations. Or do you remember what? Her yeah, she was like, well, you know, you know how they twist shit in the media and you know how they do that. Congratulations. As Miley's like in like white lady dreads. Oh, God. It was so <laughs> yeah. hard. To, it was like really so hard to defend her during that era. I'm like, oh, my God. The tongue, the tongue out era. Which, uh, listen. I genuinely think that era personally embedded me sticking my tongue. Like I was like, all I do is stick my fucking tongue out. And honestly, I think Miley, what's good, but you know, Miley seems to be happy now. So good for her. (laughs) 
<laughs> I feel like I'm on fucking like E News gas station or gas what pumps. If, what if we gave what if we gave you an award? <laughs> And you'd have to talk about it. like give a give a speech. What if we gave you? Wow, that almost sounds like the game that we planned. What's good, Jake? <laughs> it also sounds like a segue into our next segment. Maybe you, can, maybe you can segue it then. If we, if we can edit that out if you want. But. I don't know. I think you segued it pretty fucking great. <laughs> I you, just feel- <laughs> you segued it better than a tour guide in Washington D.C. I mean, Jesus Christ, Chris! This, Chris, this is just coming to me right now. And follow me. What if? We, hey, wait! What, this yeah. idea just popped into my brain. What if? <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the game we have in mind. Is that I asked uh, Jake, Sam, and Justin to come up with different award shows and awards I could win at said award shows. And I have to give a speech based off of the award that I won. This could be a total flop. And now that I've had half a bottle of wine, it could be just like a super flop. Or it could just fit in with any other award show acceptance speech. So I feel like aren't they all like loaded at those shows? That's why I felt like I had to get into the character for the role. Or you could be like, what was the one that movie where Bradley Cooper peed himself? Am I getting that right? Was it not Bradley? You know what I'm talking about? The, the movie? It was a Bradley- Who beat themselves on stage? No, the movie. Remember, it was uh, the one Lady Gaga. Am I wrong? Oh, yeah. A um, Star is Born? Yeah, didn't he pee himself on stage or something? Got oh, him pee on- himself. I thought you said beat. <laughs> I thought you said beat himself. And I was like, he did what now? I got to look up that YouTube <laughs> clip or I guess Pornhub clip. Yeah, so worst case scenario, you could just pee your pants. Okay, yeah. No, I figured like this is my moment to really give all the acceptance speeches for awards I will never win. So, all right. So, Chris, you, you have just won a Grammy for best new artist. Oh my God. Okay, let me get up to the stage. I'm walking. I'm walking. <clears throat> we need the applause sound drop. Oh my God. Guys, I just won a fucking Grammy. Who knew a tone deaf? beached whale could do such achievements sorry they served me a little too much um (laughs) first off i'd like to thank my mom see look at one of us can sing (laughs) it's not me but still we got a grammy with a last name clemens on it um i would like to thank my manager jake and oh wait did we wait what did we win best new artist grammy Oh, best new art. Oh, okay. Not best podcast. That's a little confusing. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I don't really know how I won this award, considering the fact that I can't sing. So, Alessia Cara, suck it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I threw Alessia Cara into there. I just feel like she's always nominated for best new artist. Maybe she's like only been nominated once, but it feels like every year. (sighs) <sighs> that one was not great, but I really just was not expecting to win a Grammy um, <laughs> for multiple reasons. <laughs> and also, wow, I definitely have had more to drink than I thought. So you never know, though, if, if auto tune like keeps getting better or like if we win a pod is podcasts on the Grammys now. No, not how, how can I how can I win a Grammy like with my oh, skill set narration <gasps> audio book? That's a in the- oh, bitch. I mean, I could barely write a five-page paper, but girl, let's write a book. Okay, the amount of silence gave me my answer. Noted. Got it. That's not going to happen. Coloring book? (laughs) (laughs) I do an audio book for a coloring book. All right, now on page two, color within the wing of the parrot, green. (laughs) I think we do for poetry. Something like slam poetry, stuff like that. I think we could win for poetry. Yeah, considering freshman year of college, I got a C minus in my creative writing poetry class. I'm going to say pass. I think we'd have a better shot at singing. You mean you're sitting on a whole wealth of material? Yeah, that's material for a bonfire. <laughs> hey, we got we got Oscars, Emmys, Teen Choice. There are a lot of things you can win for, though, Chris. It doesn't have to be a Grammy. No, but I no. that's the thing is I would rather take a Grammy. Although a Teen Choice surfboard is still sort of on my bucket list. Like the Teen Choice Awards changed my brain chemistry, like 10,000%. I was like, I need one of those surfboards. I need them. Now I 
now as like an adult, I'm sort of like, Jesus Christ, that stupid childhood dream of like getting a teen choice surfboard. Where the fuck in my house would I put a surfboard that would look even remotely okay for a surfboard to be? Next to your snowboard. Totally. So true. Let's <laughs> shred snob, bra. <laughs> a teen choice award, a teen choice surfboard would, that'd be different. I feel like you could hang that up without it being like. No, I'd put that in my office. I have a spot for it for sure. <laughs> I'm like, where would I put it? No, it's like right there in the corner for sure. Um, all right, let's hear a voicemail. Let's hear another iconic celebrity. Hi, award. Chris. Hi. I very much love you, Thank and I'm you. sure a lot of people are going to say this <clears throat> as their favorite like award show moment, um, but I had to say it because if someone didn't, I was going to cry. Lady Gaga, 2009 VMAs performing paparazzi. paparazzi. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care. I love that moment so much. It yes. made me fall in love with her. Oh, my God. Picture this on the scene. There's literally a broken chandelier and mansion and Let Gaga lay, baby. is giving her life. And everyone is shocked. She Pause her motherfucking on the up. Stage. Yes. I just, iconic. Iconic. I will forever remember it. Girls, okay. that was all. Same. Many blessings to you for this year oh and anyone else who's doing the podcast. Come on, Pope. Bless, bless me. You. Hello, I'm sending love. Goodbye. Thank you so much. That is truly probably one of the most important moments during an award show. God, why do all of these happen at the VMAs? MTV really doesn't deserve that. Unless you want to hire me, which in that case, you do. Um, that performance, like, I still sometimes just, like, will think about. Do you guys know the one where she was in all white with that blonde wig with, like, a pink streak in it? And she just started, she was hanging. Oh, my God. I rewatched it last night because so many people called it about that specific Did one. Did they? I, but some people kept saying bad romance and I was like, No, oh, it's I paparazzi. If the wrong thing. So I looked I watched both of them and I was like, Oh, it's paparazzi. <laughs> and, You're now a yeah, little monster. <laughs> oh my god. No, that was so ahead of its time. Like people gave myself included, honestly, although semi. Lady Gaga receives so much shit for the shit she did. Meanwhile, it's like, oh my God, that's like on the girl's vision boards these days. Like that paparazzi performance where she started bleeding on a string. Granted, also what I mostly remember is the next day, everyone making tampon jokes. That was truly one of the most transformative experiences of my lifetime. That was what I felt like doing ayahuasca would be like when I was like 10. Like as an adult, I'm like, that is what 10 year old me would have thought like an acid trip was. Oh my God. That was fucking masterful. But what, one of the voicemails was like, I'm sure that people, the students studying media right now are studying this. Is this is in their texts. Like this is they better be, or the educational has failed. The educational system has failed <laughs> us yet again. <laughs> And so has my fucking ability to speak. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> solid fucking joke. God. They really got to focus on the educational. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they spend so much time on dare. There should have been like dare for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called AA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this and I'm like, Chris, you are holding on for dear life in this episode. I think the Beverly, I think should... the Beverly Hilton has overserved me. <laughs> if you don't know, the Beverly Hilton is where they hold like a lot of award shows in Los Angeles. It's whatever. The Golden Globes and uh, the DGA Awards, like yeah. The Oscars or something. The ESPYs maybe. I'm just making up shit at this point. The Nickelodeon Choice Awards. I think we should give Chris another award. Don't you think? What, what did I win? Okay. <sighs> Sam, do you want to give Chris an award? Yes. Okay. Chris, <clears throat> I'm excited to announce that you have won a oh Nickelodeon's God. Kids Choice <laughs> Award for ah! Best Celebrity Burp. Ah! Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm walking up to stage. Oh, my God. Hey, guys. I cannot believe I am at an award show with the name Kids in it. That... 
I mean, really doesn't <laughs> seem right. I'm going to try and keep this family friendly, but oh my fud ruckin' God, I cannot believe that I just won a Nickelodeon award. This little blimp I have dreamed of winning, but never actually expected to. And to have it be for the best. Oh God, the camera. <laughs> uh, cameraman, can you, can you keep it together? Thank you so much. I'm accepting an award. Um, I just cannot believe it's for something as beautiful as burping. Uh, I just, I want to thank my mom for this genetic makeup. I want to thank gluten for really gassing me up. And most importantly, <laughs> oh, love you, God. Mwah. <laughs> And then you get slime. Yeah! <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, thank you. you know, yeah, uh-huh, I'm getting a lot more applause for this little bit than I thought I would. So the, yeah, thank, thank you. Wow. Watching this has got to be a fucking fever dream for the people watching. Do you ever want to get slimed? No, but for real? Yeah, that was me pretending I got slimed, but I realized that it's a podcast and people need to hear it so it didn't really pan out but for real oh my god i want to win a kids choice award so bad like just the iconicness of having that orange blimp that says nickelodeon like nick i grew up on like nickelodeon mtv and disney like to get any three awards from those television honchos would be i don't know what i'm saying guys i really don't that's like better than that's better than getting like the egot that's how I feel. It's like <laughs> truly I would take well you're on the surfboard holding the blimp. <laughs> not well, hold on a second. I mean Yeah, like that's the gag is like the teen choice awards and the kids' choice awards are like my level of like social class. Like a Grammy and an Emmy and an all of that, that is well beyond anything I should ever remotely come close to in life. Granted, I still want them, but yeah, I think a, I think I do think a kids' choice award and a teens' choice award would mean more to me than like a Tony. But that's mostly because I fucking hate musicals. So, <laughs> I mean, you already won a Grammy, though. You did already win a Grammy. For a second, I was like, "Wait, what?" And then I was like, "Oh, right." In this stupid parameter, <laughs> parameter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear. Let's just shut up and hear another uh, iconic award show moment from one of y'all. Hey, Chris, it's Claire. I already did one of these, but then I remembered an even better one. <gasps> Come on, Claire. It would have to be when the streaker stormed the stage on the 1974 Oscars. It was wasn't alive. Fucking iconic. My mom <laughs> showed me it a couple years ago. And I was like, no fucking way this man's penis was all over live TV. Holy shit. What? Like, he was some, like, <laughs> gay male art person, artist. That's what it's called. And I just thought it was really fucking funny. Like, oh, my God. Like, there's a streaker on the Oscars? Like, are you kidding me? Like, bring that back. Like, can I please bring streaking back? Like, I think that's fucking hilarious. I remember that when I go to soccer games. And it sounds weird, but like I remember watching soccer games and it'd be streakers on the Premier yeah, League. Well, and I'm yeah. Like, well, this is new. This is new. This is interesting. This spices it up. Soccer can be boring. This spices it up. But yeah, 1974 streaker at the Oscars. Fucking iconic. No, okay. Wow. I currently have uh, the Oscars YouTube channel open with the Oscars streaker. I can't hear it because I don't really know if that's going to play during this. I had no idea that this happened. And I was aware of streakers at soccer games, like you mentioned. But that makes more sense because you can totally have like an athleisure outfit. <gasps> oh my God, there really is a streaker. Oh my God, but that was such a cute, gentle streaking. <laughs> Oh my God, do it again, Your Honor. I mean, really? Is he still here? Wait, what in the hell? I mean, wait a second. I think there should be more of that at award shows. That was so harmless and gentle. Some guy just ran from backstage, just naked, threw up a peace sign. No one saw him again. Simpler times. Yeah, so simple. And like, just 
wholesome. Granted, yeah, his dingling was just bopping around the stage like a little Cinderella godmother, but wholesome. <laughs> I I love that. I don't know how that happened though, because again, at a soccer game, you can wear like those like snap off shirts and pants. Like I don't know who was like undoing a tux and then got down to like their birthday suit and nobody was like, What are you doing? James Bond. Uh based off of the guy that I just saw, I don't think it was James Bond. Um, but I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the suggestion. Wow, I didn't even know that that happened because I'm just so young and fertile. <laughs> I know I am curious the background, like who was the prankster? How did he get in there? Yeah, do we have any info? Does anybody remember this? Jake, you don't even you're the oldest one here. <laughs> Respect, I mean just like factually. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was a boy, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never heard of this before, so I definitely want to check it out. Oh my god! Okay. When I was a boy, we would have to streak fifteen miles through the snow <laughs> just to get arithmetic education. <laughs> <laughs> Read and write and arithmetic. <laughs> Why I continue to drink wine, I do not know, but because you're a winner, Chris. What did I win this time? Oh God! I don't know, Justin. What did you win? Well, okay, I'm going to flip it up because I'm going to have Is it a you... new MacBook? <laughs> no. I really need one. Um, no, I'm going to have you accept this award on someone else's behalf. <laughs> oh, my God. I genuinely didn't prepare for this. Okay. Okay. So, okay. <sighs> okay. Booger has am just... I even no... Wait, am I nominated for this category? Just hold on. <laughs> All right. Booger's... Okay, Booger... sorry. I'm just trying to get into character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Booger has just won Best in Show at the Westminster Kennel Dog Show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. All right, I'm getting out of my seat. I'm walking up to... Do I walk onto a stage? Like, do they even have awards at this thing? <laughs> you just, like, oh, no. trot. Okay, I'm trotting to stage. I'm on the podium. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth... Arden. Um, <laughs> hello, everybody. I don't normally have a British accent, but I feel out of place here, and I can't even imagine how out of place my dog feels, but she's a winner, baby. I cannot believe we even got accepted to Winst Westminster or even allowed here. And also, who overserved me so much? Uh, I would like to thank Booga. You are a champion, my little boogie board, my little boogie man, my little bourgeois, my little boogie boogie boogie, my little snot nugget, my little baby. I love you so much. I knew that you knew how to sit from a very young age. <laughs> and merci, merci. Mwah, mwah. I think I switched nationalities like seven different, different times. <laughs> but I just did not feel right speaking normally at the Westminster Dog Show. Oh my God. This is a problem because now I want Booger to win a fucking Westminster Dog Show award. I mean, Booger could win a teen choice for sure. You're so fucking right for that, for like wettest, slobberiest kiss or like biggest gaping asshole. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's the AV, that's the Pornhub award. Oh yeah, I guess we're talking about the Teen Choice Awards. I should have read that room. Whoopsies. I read it almost as well as the Westminster Dog Show. Now, before we carry on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is Dipsy. What's your love language? Is it physical touch? How about time together with your partner? People get turned on in all sorts of ways. Dipsy has invented a whole new love language with sexy stories for whatever mood you're in. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes. Better, 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 better. And realistic characters discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. Oh. Radically inclusive, Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. 
They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories that you can read. I can't, but you can. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. I don't know why that sounded so creepy, but it did. Now for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash unhinged. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P. S-E-A stories.com slash unhinged dipsy stories.com slash unhinged get your panties wet girl and let your imagination run wild let's get back to the episode all right what other voicemails do we have what I need some Chris Clemens if you do not share with the world Fergie crashing the stage during Tom Ford's award presentation at Trevor Live. I think it's a, a gala or something. <laughs> I'm going to freak out because it is quite literally the most diabolical thing that I have ever watched. Please, please, just do everybody the favor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, this moment brings me more joy than most things on this godforsaken planet. Do Justin, Sam, and Jake, do you know what this is? Is this the one where she was drunk? She, yes! She comes on stage and she's like, I'm here to honor Tom Ford. Whether I'm in this Tom Ford dress or, oh my God, hold on. <laughs> I have this literally saved in my Instagram because this makes me laugh so fucking hard. And the fact that there are people who don't know about this actually concerns me. Okay. Tom Ford is here. Yeah. Tom Ford is here. He's here on this bag. He's here on this amazing... <sighs> T-shirt, mock style, long sleeve shirt, and, <laughs> yeah. and fabulous skirt and pumps. But uh, he's also here as a person. <laughs> and the thing is, behind all of this Tom Ford life, which I thrive to get, and was really embarrassed that I didn't have Tom Ford makeup in my bag, by the way. <sighs> so shaming. Uh, he is... A person with compassion. Mm. He's a director. He loves to see people's feelings and listen. And uh, Tom Ford is here. <laughs> <laughs> He's here on this bag. He's okay, here. Like, it, over it. it literally. Wait, she says it again. No, no, no. no. Oh, it replayed. Oh, oh. <laughs> but it. But watching the video, it cuts to Tom Ford, and then it cuts back to her and going, "Tom Ford is here." And it's just, <laughs> guys, I cannot urge you enough to go look up Fergie Tom Ford Trevor Live Gala. This truly should be mandatory viewing for all ages. It is. I mean, this is a result of what happened to me on this podcast. Like, truly, I am one Tom Ford away from that being me. Oh, my God. And as I look into the screen, I can see more and more that I look fucked up because I start turning red. Oh, my God. Thank you to whoever called that in. That really... Thank you. That was my Kids' Choice Award um, nominee nomination form. Um Tom Ford is here in this dress. Yeah. I was going to say, have you seen Have you seen the photo of Fergie when she peed herself on stage? Speaking of peeing yourself on stage. Who, why is everyone peeing themselves on stage? <laughs> You've never seen that photo? No. Justin's the encyclopedia of people peeing themselves. Look up, look oh, my up, God. I'm look, Googling look it right now. Someone talk to keep the airspace alive. Just look up Fergie pee. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's infamous. Jake, you've ever gone streaking? Wait, it's... Wait, this is infamous. Why have I never... <gasps> Oh my god, she peed, She pissed her cargo shorts. In the gray, I thought she was wearing. In my mind, I see like gray sweats, but maybe no, not. they're like green shorts. Green shorts. This. Yep. Yeah. No, that. Wow. You know what? Fergie really gives us more than she gets praise for. So, I none of this is Fergie slander, by the right way. Fergie is. 
Fergalicious. Like, <laughs> I mean, she is in a category, a world, a planet of her own. And that's why I love her. I have always loved Fergie. I will always love Fergie. Although I will put an asterisk on, I don't know what she's going to do in the future. So everything before this date, I love <laughs> Fergie. Yeah. I don't know anymore. People, she was on stage with Army Hammer. So, I mean. Recently? Really. In no, that in that oh, video. Oh, 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 oh my oh. God. Justin, I need you to get off of this podcast episode right now and watch this full fucking video. Sorry, I'm getting Where up to get going? wine. Where are you going? I'm going to get wine, okay? <laughs> I've won so many awards tonight, I need to celebrate. Well, well, I'd like to answer Justin's question as to whether or not I have streaked in my lifetime. No, 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 You are literally on my payroll. You are not going to give this answer with me on the line. Jake just stands up and he's wearing no pants. There is an amazing thing that just happened, Chris. What happened? Your mic got turned down? Oh my god, it's so loud. <laughs> you just beat out a hotly contested best actress against Meryl Streep, Anne Hathaway, Amy Adams, and Viola Davis. You have just won an Oscar for best actress <laughs> in a motion picture. Oh my god. What award show is this? The the Oscars. Oh my God, the Oscars. I cannot believe I have won Best Actress in a role, mostly considering I'm not an actress, I'm an actor. I am so sorry to be another white man who has taken things from someone who isn't that. I am, I don't deserve this award. May Viola Davis, you come up. I'm telling you that you have officially. Shut the fuck up. Why is this music so loud? Who? Beethoven, you're dead. Shut up. Viola Davis, get up on the stage and you, this award's yours. I have gotten so many tonight. I don't even need this one. I've got a blimp from Nickelodeon. So here you go, Viola. All right. And then she says something really eloquent and beautiful. And like, anyways, that is how I would receive that award. Actress, Jake. I listen. That's what came in on the wires. I'm just telling you what happened. What wires are they crossed? <laughs> Congra- nice. Congratulations. Should you have cut the red wire and not the blue one? Congrats. I mean, what is happening? <laughs> We're trying to keep you on your toes, Chris. Bitch. I mean, I'm on my fucking hangnails at this point. What's a hangnail? Is that a thing? Yeah, hangnail. Oh, okay. Cool. I'll slay. Oh God. Um. What in the Pinot Grigio is happening here in this house? Oh, it's Sauvignon Blanc. That's what's happening. <laughs> Period. Um, do you guys have any award show moments that has have changed you for the better or worse? I, I just like when, I forget what he was winning, but Andre 3000 just walks up to the stage and he goes, thank you. <laughs> Walked away. <laughs> Andre 3000 could literally run me over with like one of those like construction machines that paves roads. Construction machine. A steamroller. I mean, Andre 3000 could run me over with a steamroller and turn me into a literal sheet of paper. <laughs> and I would be like, that was the best thing that my life could have gone to. <laughs> I, I mean that with my whole heart. Andre 3000 is just a god i genuinely like he's beyond a legend like a god i feel you though he could do whatever he wanted to me as well he can do whatever and it is just beautiful it is well done it is oh my god i mean again up until january 20th 2023 i think he is a god (laughs) i feel like i have to time stamp everything because (laughs) things things will age so poorly Uh, it can never be too sure girls I think that there was a great iconic moment. So we know that Halle Berry won Best Actress, right? She won an Oscar for Monster Ball, and it was an incredible performance. She I didn't. Also, I, di- I didn't know that. I don't know what that is. Thanks for spoiling the movie. She has mo- she has Monster it's Balls. So old. <laughs> she won a, <laughs> she won an Oscar for an uh, outstanding performance, and then and then there's a thing called the Razzie Awards, which is where they give out for the worst performance, the worst movie, and she won. Bet she won Worst Actress for Catwoman. And <laughs> I had convinced the news desk to let me cover both the Oscars and the Razzies. 
And they were like, why? Why would you cover that? It's like the worst movies. Anyway, I went there. She won and she showed up, went on stage and she gave a heartfelt, hilarious performance as though she won the greatest award ever. And she accepted the Worst Actress Award. Wait, there's an award show for, like, the worst things? The Razzie Awards. It's fantastic. I better get a floating shelf ready, (laughs) because I didn't realize that there there was hope for me. Let's win them all. (laughs) Oh, my God. I I only want to win Razzie's, Kid Choice Awards, and Teen Choice Awards. God, I sound like James Charles. That's so scary. (laughs) Um, But it's true. I, like, oh, oh, my God. I need to start lowering my standards. I can win awards for being the worst at shit. So what if you won a worst what if you won a worst actor award, Chris? What would you do for a worst actor? You want to Well, I would say fuck actor. you. I'm a great actor. I'm the worst actress. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Wow, I really look like I am one cigar away from the Godfather. I <laughs> or like a divorce. I I look <laughs> awful. Um, anyways, what part of the show are we at? I don't, I lost. A voicemail. Oh, a vo- let's hear a voicemail. I miss you guys. <laughs> hey, Chris. Um, you wanted, like, award show moments. I did. And immediately, I was taken back to fucking 2005 to... Okay, I was technically to, alive. ...some award show. Okay. And Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling... Do the kiss. ...won Best Kiss. Mm-hmm. And they come on stage, and, and they they're make on separate sides. Out. Maroon 5, She Will Be Loved is in the background, and they run from both sides, and they, like, jump. She jumps on him, and they kiss. And I remember just being, like, prepubescent and being, like, this is this is a core memory for me. Anyways, um, watch the video. You'll understand. But watch the it's video. It's so much hyped. Girl, I've know. seen it. Anyway, love you. Hi oh my god. Canada. Bye. Love you. Thank you. I appreciate that because I've never been a notebook girly. I've never even seen the notebook. Oh my god, I should start a list of all these movies that I haven't seen and really just start fucking watching them. I sit in bed at night and I'm like, there's nothing to watch. And like meanwhile, I'm like, oh my god, there's so much to watch. Oh, there's so much to live for. Do you ever think about that? There really is. Like yesterday, I was like, there is too much to live for. Today, I'm like, there's so much. Anyways, I took my meds today and I didn't yesterday. So that might have something to do with it. Um, That moment of Rachel McAdams and John Ryan. (laughs) Is it John or Ryan? Ryan. Ryan. Um, That I remember so vividly and being so confused because I never watched The Notebook. So I was just like, why are these two white people making out so passionately on the stage of an award show? And then I remember asking if they got, I proposed is what I said at the time, engaged. Um, And then I realized that it was a movie I'd never seen. So yeah, core memory. Okay. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a weird one. Uh, You're going to do a weird what? I'm going to, you want a weird thing. Oh no! Oh my God! Weirder than Westminster Dog Show? Yes. Well, it's not weirder te- necessarily. Maybe. And, and technically, Booger won that. That's so, true. You know. Well, technically, I gave the fucking speech. So. <laughs> okay, you just won Nathan's annual hot dog eating contest. <laughs> Y'all are fucked for this. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much (laughs) for this title of Nathan's hot dog eater. Most of them. Sorry, I can't really think because I've had so many wieners in my mouth and down my throat. And let me tell you, swallowing is a skill. (laughs) So for everybody who made fun of me in sixth grade saying that I wanted to swallow, (laughs) look at me now. I'm on Coney Island scarfing down some fucking pig waste. That are wrapped in sausage casing. Thank you so much. And may I will swallow till I die. Amen. This one's for us, mom. <laughs> I just feel like that that's what a hot dog winner would say. And Liz- it always takes place on Coney Island, right? Mm-hmm. Slay, bitch. See, I know what's up. Not with real shit, but like with hot dog eating contests. I got that shit on lock. As a kid, I was like, 
that's what I'm going to do. And then I saw Chelsea Handler and I was like, no, 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 I, that's what I'm going to do for sure. I'm just going to be a loud mouth. <laughs> and I mean that in like, with like a lot of respect, like I, Chelsea Handler made me realize that I, like I was funny. I didn't realize that I was funny. I thought I was a problem. Granted, I'm still a problem. I'm just a funny problem. Like too much back hair. No, that's definitely becoming a thing I didn't need clocked. Thank you so much for that, Justin. I don't know how you opened my diary and read it and then performed it in a live action reading, but that's fucked up. Shut that up. Shut up, bitch. You... Justin, do you have back hair? Only when the moon is full. Oh, God. I meant that as a serious question because you give me no back hair vibes. Zero. Yeah, no. Oh, my God. I knew it. <laughs> Maybe I've got like, you know how Kim Kardashian can smell if you have a cavity? Maybe I can sense if you have back hair. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Justin, you really don't give me back hair energy. Jake, you definitely have back hair. No, I do not. I have plushies behind me, but no back hair. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate that's almost worse than having back hair. Jesus. Hey, listen, I got feather I have feathers right behind me, right here. <laughs> yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Jake, you're this is your last episode. Thank you so much for all your work on this show. You are no longer given a speaking role. Wow, I'm hammered. I gotta say, um, these award shows are lit. Do and we have so another voicemail? Yes, Sam, I do or? have one okay. more. This is great because I feel like over the last few years, I've really trailed off with watching award shows. Like I was so into them when I was younger because I was like celebrity obsessed. But then, like, as I've gotten older, they just don't hit the same. Like, award shows. I love red carpets because, like, I'm more interested in what people are wearing. But I'm hoping we get another award show moment that I don't know of. And this isn't me setting up. Like, I literally don't know what this next voicemail is going to be. Uh, Sam's choosing another. <laughs> we'll see. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's like, uh, Hi, Hi. The podcast. Thank love you. you. Thank you. Okay, so I have a good one. You better. One of the most iconic <laughs> award show moments was John Travolta <laughs> when he was at the Oscars <laughs> and he was announced Adina Menzel's <laughs> name and he goes, the wickedly talented Adele Dazeem. <laughs> oh my gosh, so funny. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and go on YouTube because it's hilarious. Oh, I love you for bringing this up. There are like this really makes me realize how big the award show folder I have is because like I forgot about that, but I know like you said John Travolta and I immediately went to Adele Dazeem. Like <laughs> I was lo like that to me is still peak humor, peak comedy. Same with Fergie and Tom Ford. Like those are classic they are timeless they should be taught in the educational system and that is yet another reason why the educational system is failing us because the kids don't know about Adele Dazeem and Fergie rushing the stage drunk to talk about Tom Ford point blank period I rest my case she rushed the stage I don't fucking know how she got there okay I don't know her method of transportation <laughs> but she was on the stage when I feel like she maybe shouldn't have been <laughs> She definitely didn't have a speaking role. She had a no speaking role. And yet she ended up having a monologue. American history, period. Fuck whoever crossed the Delaware River and founded slavery in America. Like, I don't fucking like, well, that's important. However, they are not an American hero. Fergie, John Travolta, American heroes. Thank you. Emancipation, way more important, for sure. No, no, for sure. I'm talking about who we think of as American heroes. Some guy who like had wooden teeth and slaves or John Travolta pronouncing Adina Menzel as Adele Dazeem. Damn, damn straight. One of those is an American icon. The other is a shit bag. I think, I think with your education uh, suggestions, we can fix the K through 12 in America, Chris. Betsy DeVos, what a fucking lazy bitch. <laughs> I could have eaten her up. In a second, both her job and just her. She didn't look like there was much meat on those bones. Anyways, now I sound like Army Hammer. So, oopsies, let's pour some more Sauvignon Blanc, Your Honor. Hey. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
So you're going to have a huge career, Chris, and you're going to be across many different platforms and shows and movies. And at the end of your career, you're going to get a Lifetime Achievement Award. Can I just get a casket instead? Mm, no. <laughs> if, I'm, if I've had that long of a career, I want to lay down and shut up. You'll get an in they memoriam. Just, they just wheel you out. <laughs> See, I would love an in memoriam award. Can I get like a post mortem? <laughs> like a posthumous? We could do one at the end of this episode, too. Gorgeous. I'll just pass away from. I'll do a death <laughs> drop. <gasps> I've been watching so much RuPaul. Should I try doing a death drop? Oh, is that the one where you do the splits? Am I wrong? Girl, I'm going to have to ask you to watch a whole season of Drag Race before our next episode. <laughs> and I'm not joking. What's a death drop? Google it on your own time. This is like paid time. <laughs> no, a death drop is like literally when like, like I don't I just don't know how to describe it. It's like modern art. Congratulations on your lifetime achievement award, Chris. Oh yeah, wait, sorry, I'm in the middle of winning an award. Bring it back, Your Honor. What did he get the lifetime achievement for? Yeah, what what did I was either, uh, it's gonna it's your choice. You either win it for the Grammys or an Oscar. Lifetime achievement award. Well, bitch, I'm invited to an event where I'm getting the Lifetime Achievement Award. Tell me what event it is. Let's go Academy Awards. Lifetime Achievement Award. What's the Academy Award? Is that the Oscars? (laughs) Yes. Oh. Thank you, Oscars. Didn't I already win one tonight? (laughs) you're You're so good, you won one of each. You won a Grammy and you won an Oscar tonight, Chris. Sorry, I was just associating, thinking about just how stupid these games are. It is the splits. Okay, no. First of all, a death drop is not the fucking splits. Hi, thank you so much for this Lifetime Achievement Award. I would like to teach Justin Bretter (laughs) that the splits is not the same as a fucking death drop, okay? If you're going to come out here with your straight white male confidence, I'm going to have you come (laughs) correct. (laughs) <laughs> That's fair. Point blank period. Watch Mama Roo, watch some drag queens, and learn what a goddamn death drop is. Thank you so much for this Lifetime Achievement Award, <laughs> Oscars, or wherever I am. I appreciate it, and it will go on the shelf with all the others. Mwah. <laughs> Good use of time. Excellent. Yeah, if if I become really old and I have if I'm like one of those people that just like has so many fucking awards by the end. I'm just going to get up on stage and just be like, well, another thing my cleaner has to dust. Like, I I mean, that's the level I want to be on, is to just be able to be like, fuck you, Oscars. Not right now. Oscars, uh, Oscar, let me know if you if you need someone to get on their knees. I'll do fucking anything <laughs> for a goddamn statue. <laughs> what Do you remember when Adele broke the Grammy? Or what exactly happened? Vaguely, I remember her breaking like something. It was like it was. Was it when she won? Ugh, I should. She was break dancing. No, she broke the award. No, she, it was when she won. Maybe it wasn't. I'm just gonna get schooled in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it was. She like won something, and she was like, "Oh shit, I broke the fucking <laughs> awards." <laughs> Rolling in the deep. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. like that kind of vibe. Well, I feel like it was when she was talking to Beyonce, but in my head, I I couldn't remember it either. And I I was thinking of Mean Girls when they break off a piece of the crown and throw it. Like, did Adele do that with the Grammy? (laughs) Okay. I'm really glad that all of us are really just kind of mentally incapacitated. It really makes me feel kind of at home. And like, I just won an Oscar, baby. Hey. (laughs) Oh, God. Should we do another voicemail? I kind of love hearing from y'all. Uh, yes, I have one more we can use. Hey, Chris and team. Um, hey. So I am high, and I don't know if this counts technically. No, we could tell. Award show, but like it's a show where they give out awards. Um, when Steve Harvey crowned the wrong woman Miss Universe. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. The most iconic and also the worst moment in my television history because I just can't even imagine. First of all, I just can't even imagine fucking up such an important moment so badly. Um, but also, like, 
the embarrassment and discomfort that everybody in the vicinity and everybody watching had the experience is also probably greater than like any other any other moment in TV history. It is just bizarre, iconic, messy, cringe, all of it. Mm. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. you. Love you. I can tell that you are so high. Please puff up past bitch. <laughs> um, that also Loki sounded like Sydney Sweeney. So, oh my God, I can't believe Sydney Sweeney called in. Um, I actually just within the last like week, yeah, week s- discovered this. Oh my God. The fact that Sam, you brought up this voicemail is like freaking me out because I just stumbled across this whole Steve Harvey phenomenon, like in the last week of him saying, and one of the Miss Universe was like, well, at least you can read an envelope or whatever. And I was like, what does that even mean? And then I found the whole context and I was like, holy shit. I also was dying of laughter at whoever left that voicemail saying it was like one of the most important times. Like, yeah, I get it. But like, this is also Miss Universe. Like, it's just a beauty pageant. Well, I guess I shouldn't say just a beauty pageant. Is that derogatory? Um, to say it's just a beauty pageant? To beautiful people? Yeah, to beautiful. Yeah, fuck you. You're already beautiful, okay? <laughs> you can have the hardship. Here's a speed bump, bitch. ba bum ba bum I mean, yeah, why am I worrying about pretty people? Fuck y'all. Y'all don't have feelings. You just have good looks. Where's the applause? Thank you. Thank you so much. I've got the fucking power now, bitch. I have a button that makes noises. Um, what is that? <laughs> the awkward silence after. There's the crickets, bitch. Wow. I just won an award for best DJ because, bitch, I'm about to fucking f- fuck around on this soundboard. Uh, wicka wicka. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, anyways, this is, I think, yeah, we're, the music's playing me out, so I've got to finish this up. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in. Be sure to subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Cummins wherever you get your podcast. I hope you enjoyed this, like, dysfunctional, this really was kind of an unhinged episode. Um, and it was award show themed, and we're living, laughing, and loving. So be sure to follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Chris. I have a TikTok, tiktok.com. Or I don't actually know what the URL <laughs> translation is. But it's just Chris Clemens on Instagram and TikTok. Um, be sure to subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens wherever you get your podcasts, video episodes, youtube.com slash Chris, rate and review, Adele Dezim, <laughs> Tom Ford is here in this dress. I didn't pack his makeup. Thank you, Justin, Sam, Jake, and um, Adele Dezim. Bye. Bye.